I'm Pedro, originally I'm a philosopher, and I'll try to explain a project that we are running, it's called the Associated Whistleblowing Press, which is an ONG which seeks to struggle uh, for um, freedom of expression and um, struggle against violations of human rights by providing uh, social um, change using whistleblowing, which means we want to provide um, uh, social change by disclosing information which can prove uh, wrongdoing. That's uh, like a very familiar idea, no? So, uh, as we want to provide social change, it means that um, we think that something is wrong. So, uh, more or less try to explain what we think that is, which is wrong. I don't know if you are familiar with a, a philosopher, he's called it a Habermas. Like, uh, it's somehow like um, we are somehow forking the ideas of Habermas and adapting to a more, I don't know, contemporary uh, scenario. So the problem is um, we have a system uh, driven by uh, economy and politics. It means we have a structure of exchange and a structure of power which, in which uh, our world of life is um, inside. So our social interaction and our self-interaction, it means um, family, uh, school, uh, university, friends, um, uh, I don't know, well, our, li our common life and our communication within, uh, with ourselves, they are included, in, uh, inserted in an econo econo economic and political um, structure. The problem is that uh, the imperatives of this structure this ec economy and political structure, they are really invading our world of life. It means uh, our social interactions and our interactions with ourselves, they are obeying uh, these imperatives, which is money, is now the economy imperative, and power, the uh, political imperative. It should be not necessary like this. We could have like economy and politics without the imperatives of power and money. So the problem in the end is that we have a problem with a moral problem in economy and politics. This problem leads economy and politics to really like invade our world of life. For example, now we have like a, a, a hypertrophy of jurisdiction. It means um, each uh, common act of our life, for example, being are regulated by law. Uh, and these laws, uh, they just, they are being used as tools for these imperatives, which is power and money. So, uh, this is the basic problem. You can identify this, uh, for example, in uh, every time, every kind of unfairness, for example, with, we can uh, see as social interaction. Like unfairness, uh, war crimes, corruption, they're all led because people are just obeying power and money imperatives. So, uh, this is the problem that we want to change. So, uh, we think that society is modeled by information, behavior. Behavior is modeled by information. So, the way we have to change this structure, this invasion of, of this uh, power and money imperatives on the world of life, in the world of life, is to change behavior of people. So, uh, we change behavior of people by uh, working with these two parameters, which is the kind of information which is available for people and the ways of assimilating this information. For example, uh, you can take it like in, two, in two ways, both in a philosophical way, which means like everything you, you, you do is, uh, was um, designed by the information you receive it. Uh, both sensorial information, intellectual information, conceptual information. So in the end, we are feeding this structure because we are behaving in a way that legitimizes, in the end, this kind of politics and, econo and, and economy. Uh, our consumption habits, for example, they, ju they uh, justify and legitimate this kind of economy. Like people which are in power, politicians, they, they have been voted. Uh, so, um, the problem is that it is in our hands. So, we have just to change the structure of the kind of information which is available and the ways of assimilating this information to change public dialogue. And on changing public dialogue, we can start to change behavior of people. So, they will start to vote in 
other politicians or maybe not even stop voting. They will start to have like other types of consumption that will not legitimate uh, this structure. Um, so our project is more or less <laughs> organized like this. We have an um, uh, NGO, and it's now based in, in Belgium. And from this NGO, which is under the, the, legal framework, the Belgian legal framework, which is a, a framework which can at least provide more or less uh, protection of sources with some restrictions, so we can more or less uh, protect uh, our sources. Uh, not fully, because it's nearly impossible to find a... It does not exist, actually, a legal framework, framework where you can totally uh, protect your sources. But comparing, like, uh, the Belgian one and the Icelandic one are, like, the best. But now we chose uh, Belgium. Um, so we work with an a NGO which provides a legal framework. A, it's more or less a legal shield. And uh, this uh, NGO starts to uh, construct like local nodes. It means uh, uh, working groups of people which are uh, um, built of uh, hackers, IT experts, journalists, activists, human rights advocates, uh, designers, why not? So each local node, which means uh, a whistleblowing platform inserted in a specific social context, uh, which receives files and dialogues with a specific public. Why we chose this decentralized uh, structure? Because if we really want to change uh, public dialogue, we have to change, first of all, information which is available. So, which is, uh, which is stronger? Uh, a person who finds out that a company uh, in her neighborhood is polluting the river of, 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 uh, of the neighborhood, or uh, if this person finds out that the um, United States is um, uh, making a deal of weapons with uh, a next country, for example. I think that like, local leaks, they have more impact in terms of changing behavior, in terms of uh, information which is really important for people, and information which can reach uh, local communities. So the idea is that we'll start building local nodes, which dialogue, uh, di uh, make dialogue with public, um, with specific publics. Like the, 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 um, the yellow points are the whistleblowing platforms and the, yeah. From there, uh, these local nodes, they will start to exchange information between themselves. For example, imagine we have a node in Netherlands and in this node we receive information which is um, related also to, um, to Russia. I don't know, it's a document. So, if you have also a Russian node, they can try, they, they can start to exchange uh, documents uh, they, th which they receive it, exchange analysis. It's more or less making like a, um, a cross-border uh, journalism, but applied to whistleblowing and sensitive uh, documents. Uh, so in the end, the <laughs> what, we, what we reach, like uh, we think that it would take some time, is that we can have um, a lot of local nodes receiving like local um, local documents which can prove wrongdoing in a local context, and uh, these nodes can work and build and build um, a news wire of information. So in the end, we would have like all these nodes feed, feeding a global news wire, news wire based ex exclusively on unbiased uh, reports build up open uh, scientific journalism. That's why we call it associated whistleblowing press, because the, the aim in the end is to provide uh, a global news wire with unbiased information. Uh, okay, apart from that, we offer some, some services also to communities, which is, uh, we provide like advisory if people want, uh, like local groups want to build uh, local whistleblowing platforms. We provide like advisory on how to, um, to publish this information and how to treat and analyze uh, sensitive documents. We provide, we make, put local groups in contact with, uh, with um, legal uh, association, associations like focused on the legal as aspect. And uh, this, so 
What we need now, we need collaboration. We need uh, people willing to, to participate. It can be like uh, yes, IT experts, designers, uh, journalists, people like, uh, willing to analyze uh, information which is already public or information that we could potentially receive. So you can go to uh, awp.is if you, if you are interested. We really need and we are really op uh, open to, to really like, uh, start opening new, uh, new nodes of whistleblowing. Uh, donate, we accept anything. <laughs> accept uh, servers, both virtual and um, both virtual and uh, and dedicated. We accept hardware of any kind. We accept um, yeah, bitcoins, uh, money, of course. Uh, we have uh, already we are already running um, a platform. It's uh, uh, to receive files, which is an international one. It's Dropbox.awp.is. So you can go there and read like our policies, our data management um, uh, and moral policies uh, uh, in which regards like uh, manipulating these files. And we also have our first uh, local whistleblowing node, which is uh, in Iceland, which is lios.is. So well, I think it's this. Thank you.